Hi, this is Elena with Black Sheep 303 Creative, and today's project features the dog tree stamp from Stampendous that is so cute. And since I'm a huge dog lover, I had to have it. So there you see it, super, super adorable. And I am stamping it in VersaFine Onyx Black ink onto some Arches Hot Press watercolor paper. I'm gonna be coloring this with ink tense pencils and water. You have to use water with those. They're kind of like colored pencils, but also not, as you will see here in a second. So these are very, very saturated. So as you see me sort of base coating this Chihuahua at the top here, I am using, um, what color am I using? I am using Baked Earth as a base coat and then I will add in some Saddle Brown for a little bit of shading, but it doesn't look like much right now because I am coloring this very lightly. Like it's a very light hand that I am using because as you will see, once I add water, the color is very saturated and the water is what brings out that color. So if you're gonna try these or if you have already used them, you know, um, start being light handed is how you should start you can always layer color on top. Like you could layer and layer and layer these and you will see me do that quite a bit. Like as it dries, I'm gonna add more to certain, certain of the dogs, um, add more shading, add different colors and it continues to blend, it continues to add depth. Um, you, there's like no limit to how long you can keep coloring with these. Um, so you are much better off starting off light and then adding additional layers. And then you'll see as I as the color is like the paper gets wet and you start coloring onto the wet paper, the properties of the of the pencil change because now it starts to get more saturated as you're drawing directly onto the paper and it becomes a little more difficult to blend. There are times on this where I use that purposely to create some texture. There's two particular dogs where I do that, the long-haired chihuahua and then the terrier at the bottom. Um, so that can be an advantage, but it can also really kind of mess you up if you, if it's too wet and you start coloring and then the color just gets too dark and you know, it, it becomes difficult to blend. So as I just said, <laughs> please start out with a light hand. Now there are three dogs, uh, that I use black color or dark gray with, um, and I use the same color combination. So this is neutral gray to start off with, and then I add black ink black for shadow or shading as you will see here. Now I did not look up pictures of any dogs. I just sort of did this from um, like my head and what I thought these dogs kind of looked like. So I can't say that these are particularly accurate in terms of specific breeds, <laughs> but I had fun and that was the point. Um, so this, so I've turned this guy into like kind of like a French bulldog. And now this is my long haired Chihuahua. And so I am starting off with, let me find it here, um, some baked earth. And then I add a little bit of willow. And then I, once I get, once it gets wet, um, it's going to change the properties of the, the, as I mentioned, the um, pencil. So here I'm, I'm coloring into the wet with the baked earth. And you can see how much darker that is and how it gets like kind of tough. It gets very textural and it's tough to blend. But that worked for me on that because I thought it added to the sort of the fluffy effect of the fur as well as how um, the fur is like kind of darker on the outer edges than it is on the inside. And I really liked the way that looked. Now for my Scotty dog here, I'm again using neutral gray and ink black. Um, and this gets a little difficult just because it's, you know, he's all black. But um, I do wind up going back to him like numerous times to add additional black in to darken down certain sections while other sections stay lighter. Now for my golden retriever here, I've got um, sienna gold, which is like a yellow. And then I'm taking my wet brush and I used it on the cadmium orange pencil. So like I, I touched the pencil tip like I'm doing now um, to add the cadmium orange shading onto that guy. And then for my brown and white dog here, which I don't even know what he is, I used matter brown and dark chocolate. So matter brown is kind of the base coat. Now I'm adding dark chocolate for shading. They blend very nicely together. 
And you see as I go, like I, I'm often doing the tip to tip method. So I'm taking the wet brush to the tip of the pencil and then adding shading with it. And that helps me control the color a little bit better and it's not too crazy dark. Although I would say when you first try that, test it on a like side piece first before you just stick it down because sometimes the color can get fairly intense if you're going directly to the colored pencil with a wet brush and then you go right to the paper. So just bear that in mind. Um, then my Dalmatian is again the neutral gray and then adding shading with black. And then I'm going to slow down here for my terrier because this was pretty fun. So I am base coating with red oxide and then I'm going to go to the matter brown pencil and I'm going to start using my my wet brush directly on that pencil to start streaking into the fur. So the wet brush is blending the red oxide base coat and adding a little bit of that matter brown at the same time. Because on this dog, I really wanted a streaky effect of like sort of different shades of brown on the fur. And so, and certain sections would be darker than others. So that's where I'm adding more matter brown. The red oxide is a little bit lighter. And then I'm blending together um, and then going back to the red oxide to get like a more saturated color. And I'll kind of go back and forth like that um, sort of streaking them out and then eventually I'm going to just draw directly onto the wet cardstock because I'm not quite getting the saturation level in certain areas that I wanted on this dog. And so that's where drawing directly onto the wet cardstock like I am right now helps because it's not going to blend out thoroughly once I get it wet again like once I go with the wet brush. Um, so it's going to leave um, sort of those residual streaky marks in the fur. And that was the look that I wanted for this dog. So you'll see here as I start to blend, it does blend somewhat, but still that um, that wet, like saturated pencil will kind of hang around. So it's going to leave a textural effect, which was what I was going for with that guy. So. As you can see, there are different techniques that you can use with these pencils to get different effects. And they're amazing and really cool. And then I'm adding some red oxide to my uh, little golden retriever to kind of tone them down a little bit. Um, oh, sorry, baked earth, not red oxide. And then this is dark chocolate on my Basset Hound. And I'm basically going to use dark chocolate um, to shade down my chihuahua on top. And then I just use the same color over and over. But as I add extra here and there. And so you can see I'm going back and adding black to the Dalmatian. And later I will add a little more to the um, Scotty dog. And then I will darken down my um, Basset Hound ears later. You won't see me do that, but you can just keep going back and adding shading to get the depth of color that you want. And so it's really versatile and really, really fun. So I love the Inktense pencils and I wanted to kind of give you a fairly thorough look at how I color with those. Now all the colors that I'm using on all these little areas will be listed on my blog post. So like the holly and the leaves and all that, and as well as each dog, the colors I use on each dog, I will list on the blog post. So if you want to know specifically what I use to color this, um, that information is available. Now the dogs all have highlights in their eyes and highlights on their nose, and those got kind of messed up with the coloring. So I went back with my white glaze pen and highlighted those um, again with that so to bring out those highlights and now I am adding some Nuvo silver lining crystal drops and then I will add some Nuvo glitter honey gold and golden sunset drops to some of the little they're like little circle little added dots that are details that are added into the stamp so I wanted to little, get a little bit of glitter in there for a little bit of a festive touch and then when I'm done, I will fussy cut that whole thing out with a like leaving about an eighth of an inch border. Now my greeting is wishing you joy from the Gina K Design Scripty Holiday Stamps. And I'm stamping it onto uh, some Gina K Design's red velvet cardstock in Versamark ink. And then I'm going to heat emboss it in white. And then I will fussy cut that out as well, following kind of the shape of the stamp. So there will be a border of red around it, but it sort of becomes almost like a line that will stretch across the inside of my card, as you will see a little bit later. So here's my construction pieces. So there I've fussy cut out my tree and I've added a bow to the top using a, glue, a, mic, a mini glue dot 
kind of wadded it up and put it behind the bow to stick it on the top. And then I've added white fun foam to the back of my dog tree to elevate it off the front of the card. Now my card base is an A2 size top folding card base and I've covered it with a piece of, of paper from the Lawn Fun Knit Picky 6x6 paper pack. And you see it does have a little tear in the bottom but that's gonna get covered up. And there's the greeting on the inside where you see how I've fussy cut that out. So that green's gonna be covered up mostly by this piece of paper from the Authentique Retro Christmas 6x6 paper pack. And you can see that's double-sided and it's really, really cute. And I'm using my ATG gun on that. And that's been cut just three and three quarters by five. So it's got a quarter of an inch border all the way around. And now I'm just gonna adhere down my, tr my dog tree with its fun foam back with some six millimeter double-sided adhesive tape from Elizabeth Craft Designs, which will hold that fun foam in place very nicely. And so I didn't really do anything else to this because that stamp is so cute and kind of big. And so I just thought that was the star of the card. Now I did add some clear Spectrum Noir sparkle marker to the dogs that you can see there. So the any colored fur areas on the dog got the, got the sparkle marker. So um, some of them like their whole faces are sparkled up and some of them um, just like the darker fur is sparkled up. So you can kind of see it there. But look at how cute that stamp set is. So if you are a dog lover, I think you have to have this stamp. It's pretty awesome. And I had a really, really fun time coloring it and doing all the different breeds with those Inktense pencils. So hopefully I've given you a little bit of inspiration on using Inktense pencils with um, fur and dogs. Here are two more projects that I've done um, for Christmas in the past, especially one uh, where I adapted a crazy dog stamp from, to look like my dog, Django. And supplies are linked in the video description and over on my blog. Thanks so much. Have a great day.